Education Mobile, quality e-learning experience on the go. Welcome to Fushion Mobile e-learning clinic. My name is Tonya Laloa and I'll be walking you through the physics course. We want to talk about gas laws. Uh, in this topic, what we'll be looking at gas laws, we'll consider measurement of gas pressure, we'll consider Boyle's law, after which we'll look at Charles law, and then pressure law or the Gandawad's law. Um, Gay Luzek's law, rather. Then we'll look at the general gas laws, uh, general gas equation, and we'll consider Van der Waals equation for real gases, and then conclude with the um, using the ex using the kinetic molecular theory to explain the gas laws. Okay, let's get started. Uh, in our previous class, we've talked about how to measure pressure, and we said we use the barometer to measure pressure. Well, when it comes to pressure of gases in the laboratory, we do use what is known as the manometer to measure pressure. The manometer has a U shape, is a U shape device. That is, it has something like a U shape. So the this is a longer part, and it has a kind of curve here, and. Uh, the gas which, which, uh, which we want to check the pressure of would be in air. That's the gas. And a liquid would be used to fill a certain proportion of the manometer. Now, the manometer actually takes reading of the pressure inside the gas in relation to the atmospheric pressure. So when we want to do our calculation, we'll simply check what is the what is the difference between the heights. Let me make my this thing here. So what we want to know is the height difference between the reading from the atmospheric pressure and that of the gas. And then we use the pressure, uh, we use the density of the liquid in the tube and acceleration due to gravity to calculate the pressure exerted by the gas as against gravity. So, of course, we learned that Pressure in gases or uh, in fluids is calculated by P equals to rho GH, where rho is the density of the liquid or gas, that's the density of the fluid. G is the acceleration due to gravity, and H is the, is the vertical height through which the, there is a, a difference in pressure. So, in, the particular, in this particular case, this this gas is exerting pressure on the liquid and also this open end suggests also that uh, a pressure will be acting the pressure that will be acting here h as i would like to call it is the atmospheric pressure that's the atmospheric pressure so this is the pressure exerted on the liquid the pressure exerted on the liquid through this distance h would be added to the atmospheric pressure as plus atmospheric pressure to get the pressure of the gas. So the pressure of the gas inside this manometer would be equal to the, pre the pressure due to pressure head from the H. We we'll call it pressure head. That is the difference between the flow of the liquid in the tube. The pressure due to the pressure head from the, from the manometer plus the atmospheric pressure which is acting on the other end of the manometer. I haven't spoken about measurement of gas pressures. Uh, qu some questions will pop on your screen in a few seconds. Please answer them. We want to know how much you understand what has been taught so far. Boyle's law. Well, when we consider gases, gases are very interesting substances. Many of, the, many of the devices which we use do have gas working in them, one way or the other. And the knowledge of setting 
operation, certain principles help us in the design and use of these machines and devices. One of these many laws is Boyle's Law. Boyle's Law tries to show the relationship that exists between pressure and volume of a gas. Boyle's Law states that the volume of a given mass of gas is inversely proportional to the pressure acting on the gas, given that the temperature of the system remains constant. So that's, that suggests that volume is inversely proportional to pressure. Well, if this, if this law is as it says it should be, then there should be a kind of a constant that should relate to them because it is having a proportionality. So you can say V equals to a K divided by P. I can bring this P up and we'll have PV equals to K. And this K is um, talking about PV is constant. That suggests that should you apply a lot of pressure on the system, the volume would reduce. And should you apply, um, should you increase the volume of a system, the pressure will increase and um, would reduce. Given that the mass remains the same and the temperature remains the same. So, what we do with the, general, with the Boyce law is we do what is called generalization. When we talk about generalization, what do we mean? It means that we are considering a particular system. Maybe we are moving this same volume of gas. We'll put it in a um, five liter container and then we'll take that same volume of gas and we'll put it in a 20 liter container. So we'll say uh, the first one we describe as P1 V1 should also be equal to P2 V2. This is called generalization. That is, since we say it should be constant, it would not change. Whatever we have the first time should maintain itself so long as those conditions remain unchanged. This principle is very much, finds a lot of application in our cooking gas and many other devices in which we do use. That's uh, the many of the, it also gives us a uh, sense for calculating the amount of a substance in the amount of the gas in a particular container. Let's consider Charles' law. Charles' law tries to establish the relationship between volume and um, temperature. If we take if we take into if we take into cognizance all the parameters that actually affect um, pressure that actually affect gases, if we take into cognizance the parameters that do affect gases, those include the mass of the gas, the volume of the gas in question, the volume, um, the volume to be occupied by the gas, the temperature, um, the pressure acting on the gas. So, in, in um, Charles' law states that a volume of a given mass of gas is directly proportional to the temperature, at, um, to the temperature of the gas, given that the pressure remains constant. So, it says that V is directly proportional to T, given that the pressure remains constant. Um, a good illustration for this could be us having a kind of a balloon, or let me use better still, the um, air balloons that, are used to fly, that we used to use in those days as airplanes. They fill the air balloons with helium gas and they begin to heat the air balloon. Now, balloon would grow bigger as the heat is being applied, thereby making the helium gas want to escape. They want to run away, but they are being trapped by the covering at, on top of them. So it makes them push against the walls of the balloon, thereby expanding the balloon size. So the, for the helium gas not to completely um, be, for the helium gas not to, be exp not to experience extra pressure, instead of it being unnecessarily disturbed, it will simply find a way of expanding the space. Now, the same thing applies if you have um, your gas. Many of us, we do use body spray. Our body spray, you take your body spray, once it's still new, you press it, something comes out of it. But imagine what would have happened if that's your body spray, which is about um, this in height, 
were, the content of it were to be exp uh, was to be poured, if the content of it was to be transferred into a much larger container that's about three times its size, what you experience is actually going to supposed to be a loss in pressure. But if you are trying to keep the pressure stable, what you experience is a reduction in temperature. The temperature would go away. But if you want to keep your, if you take a balloon, your normal balloon, and you pump it, and you're trying to keep the pressure the same, when you apply any kind of heat, when you warm it up, what would happen is the balloon would have to expand to accommodate it. This is to show you that heat has an effect on, this is to show that heat has an effect on the volume of substances. Even when you consider your solids, when you heat your solid, it begins to expand. The same thing happens to your gases. So, this is the general law that he came up with. And of course, as usual, we always want to simplify it by saying V equals to KT. When we get V equals to KT, pulling everything to one side, we have V over T equals to k and k is constant so since we know that k would mean it is constant then we can go ahead and generalize the equation saying v1 divided by t1 equals to v2 divided by t2 and with this equation we can explain further the child's law so some of the machines do, which we do use actually also use the ideology of Charles' law in their operations. You increase the temperature of this particular liquid, um, gas, it wants to get bigger. So long as it is the same mass of gas that is there, the gas would want to expand. And that expansion is actually important. For example, while building bridges, that is not in gases though, in solids. While building bridges, the scientists actually do take into consideration the expansion that would occur on the road. If we should come to um, the topic we treated some topics ago, we talked about thermometers, and we mentioned made mention of the gas thermometer. If a gas in a gas thermometer, the gas expands based on the gases expand based on increase in temperature. So when there is a temperature change we can use um, Charles' law to estimate how much expansion will be ex uh, experienced. And of course, if you have a gas in a particular location and it expands, due, maybe because of um, an heat, a source of heat was brought closer, we can do an estimation to find out what amount of heat, that is how much temperature increase or decrease, how much temperature change at Occurred. Pressure law or Gay Lussac's law. Gay Lussac's law, which is also known as the pressure law, states that the pressure of a given mass of gas is directly proportional to the temperature, given that the volume of that gas remains constant. This law can be proved in a couple of ways. And one of the things that I want to first point out uh, as regards this law is um, the cooking of beans in our houses using pressure pots. I don't know how many of us do have pressure pots in our houses, but if you have seen a pressure pot before, a pressure pot is airtight. It does not allow air into the thing you are cooking. Now, the good thing about the pressure pot is this. When you use it to cook beans, your beans get softer very fast gets soft very fast and what really happens it does not cook your beans with just temperature increase it cooks your your beans with pressure the pressure under which the beans is being boiled makes the brain seed soften as fast as possible the pressure law states something that says p is directly proportional to t thus we can have um, our equation will tell us P equals KT and thus we can say P over T equals K and our K is also constant. 
are case constants. So we can now generalize by saying P1 divided by T1 equals to P2 divided by pressure law finds its use in the design of gas thermometers and also in the design of important machines such as our pressure ports which have a lot of use. Our machines such as the pressure ports, our ovens and many other heating agents. Let's talk about the general gas law or the general gas equation. The general gas equation simply merges all, it marries all the gas laws, the three gas laws, that is the Boyle's law, the Charles law and Gay-Lussac's law, it marries them into one equation, thereby re reducing the number of factors and conditions under which these laws can be applied. So the condition is now restricted only to the given mass of gas. And the general gas equation says that P1 V1 divided by T1 equals P2 V2 divided by T2, given that the mass of gas remain constant. In other words, if you are working with a specific mass of gas, the pressure multiplied by the volume divided by the temperature, the temperature measured in Kelvin, of course, would give you the same thing in every kind of condition, no matter if you have alterations in pressure, uh, volume, and temperature, they would always be constant, given that the mass of the gas is the same. Uh, of course, we saying that the mass of the gas is the same also means that you are saying that the number of molecules of the gas, the amount of substance of that gas remain the same. Thus, we use the general gas equation in solving very many of our um, questions in, on um, gas laws. All right, let's take this question. The question says, 800 cm cube of gas was collected at, the pem at temperature 33 degrees Celsius and pressure 500 millimeter of mercury. Convert the volume to, of the gas, sorry, convert the volume of the gas to STP. STP means standard temperature and pressure. When we're talking about standard temperature and pressure, it means the standard temperature in which we have our atmosphere and the standard pressure which uh, exists in our atmosphere. All right, let's first bring out our parameters and we'll shed more light on the standard temperature and standard pressure. We were given the volume of the gas, that's V1, and we're given in 800 as 800 cm cube. Well, normally we do not measure, we do not measure um, volumes in cm cubes, but when it comes to gas, general gas equation, you can, you can use cm cube. We are given our temperature, which is T1, to be equal to 33 degrees C. We do not work with temperatures in Celsius scale. So you convert the temperature to Kelvin. And to convert your temperature to Kelvin, you add 273 to the Celsius scale you have, which would give us 306. Kelvin. And also we're given the pressure. Okay. Then our pressure, that's P1, is giving us 500 millimeter of mercury. Now we're asked to find the volume at STP. When we're talking about STP, while the temperature, the standard temperature of the, of, in, in physics, we take our standard temperature to be 273 Kelvin, and the standard pressure in millimeter of mercury is 760 millimeter of mercury. So we can go ahead and do our calculation. We we'll bring our formula up as P1 V1 divided by T1 equals to P2 V2 divided by T2. 
resolving the equation to express what V2 would be, would have V2 to be equal to P1 V1 T2 divided by T1 P2. So that gives us V2 equals, we can substitute our values. Our P1 is 500 multiplied by our V1 is 800 multiplied by our T2 is 273 divided by our P2 is 760 multiplied by 306. So when this information is entered, when this information is entered into the uh, into a calculator, our final answer will be 400. Our final answer will be 469.56 centimeter cube. Let's talk about Van der Waals equation for real gases. All this, the information given to us, provided to us by Boyle and Charles and Gelusex, all of them have some assumptions. And some of those assumptions include the fact that, um, 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 include the fact that they, say, they claim that um, gases are incompressible. Well, gases are compressible. There are other assumptions which are also made that um, it, every power, every amount of energy within the gas is expanded on keeping the gas in its state. But that is not true. Some of the power is lost due to friction, of inter, uh, intermolecular friction, and also both of these things are responsible for some of the losses that are experienced, that are experienced in the bombardment of atoms or molecules within the gas. And this brings us to what we know as the Van der Waals forces. The Van der Waals forces show uh, an ex a, a very good clear picture of what really happens in the gas. The Van der Waals forces claim that Van der Waals has an equation that claims that Van der Waals equ equation claims that P plus um, a, a variable A divided by the volume squared multiplied by V minus B equals to R multiplied by T. Where the P is the pressure, the V is volume, the R is the gas constant, and the T is the temperature. A and B are variables, are constants, which are injected to balance out the, to balance out some of the losses that has been experienced due to the bombardment and friction. So, for simplicity's sake, the Van der Waals forces, the Van der Waals equation was further simplified into P multiplied by V equal to RT. This was later modified into the equation VP PV equals NRT, which is known as the ideal gas equation. We'll look more at this in other lesson in another lesson let's consider the kinetic molecular theory the kinetic molecular theory actually can be used to explain further in to to a great extent all the gas laws that have been earlier discussed for example the boy's law the boy's law was claiming pv is constant well to show that pv is constant According to what happens in the kinetic theory, the theory of kinetic, uh, in kinetic th molecular theory, we have a, a quantity of gas, and our quantity of gas is being put into this container, and we have a piston placed above it, and we have this there. Now, when we compress this piston, such that it comes to this level. 
unless you hold it there like, or maybe the gas that was there isn't that much if you should remove your hand you would observe that the piston by default would rise again with a kind of force this force with which it is rising back is to show you that there is a pressure that has been amounted that has been stored that has increased the pressure that was here in initially has been increased compared to what it used to be in like manner when you take your balloon and you begin to blow it and blow it it would get to a point where it would tend to burst although your balloon does not exactly although your balloon does not exactly fit in into this condition as such but it creates an awareness of what happens when there is a high pressure now at this particular high pressure the pressure when you when you press when you reduce the volume of the thing you are increasing the pressure on the liquid on the on the gas rather the gas molecules become more pressurized that's why most times if you go through most textbooks you see them draw something like this so right p when the pressure increases the volume reduces and when the pressure reduces the volume increases that's what pre um, boy's law stands to explain to us try to explain to us in charles law the ideology what the states this theory stated that v divided by t is constant in other words it's claiming that there is a direct relation um, there is a direct relationship between the volume of a country of an entity and the temperature should the pressure be kept constant if you were if you had a constant volume bath that is a, 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 a kind of a, a bottle that can keep a constant volume and you store your water or, um, or your gas inside it let's say air constant pressure rather there is a particular vol quantity of um, air here and the air has already been pressurized to a certain degree when you apply heat when you apply heat to it it would begin to heat up the molecules of the it begins to heat up the molecules of the gas inside air and when those molecules are heated up they possess kinetic energy with the possession of kinetic energy they try to build pressure but since the vehicle since the container can all, can only keep a certain pressure for it to reduce the pressure it has to increase the volume so that the pressure that is supposed to be there will remain constant and as it increases the volume temperature increase results in increase in volume so this actually has to do well with the bombardment of those materials the the um, the atom the molecules rather the molecules begin to have more frequent collisions more frequent collision the gay lusacs law claims that states that p divided by t is constant well this was one which we were able to explain a little more in detail the other time because of the pressure pot when you use the pressure pot the pressure when you heat up the pot of course constant volume the volume does not increase and the gases inside are being pressurized that's why when you want to open your pressure pot your pressure pot you cannot just open it like that you have to lift the stopper the dead weight stopper that is on it when you lift the dead weight stopper you start hearing the the, the whistling of the gas coming out through the stopper 
and the whistling can go on for a very long time, what is it trying to do? It's trying to reduce the pressure inside the pot. So that shows us that when we increase temperature, pressure will be increased. Also, it, is, it should be noted that the pressure that everything can hold is always limited to a certain degree. So if you should continue heating your pressure pot and it gets to a certain level, that's why your pressure pot, when, it, when the temperature of the, inside the pressure pot gets to a certain level, by default, that dead weight on it would push up by itself and release out, let out some pressure and then it will fall back. But if you do not allow that to happen, there is a very high chance of an explosion in your kitchen. You can actually make a bomb out of cooking beans using your pressure pot. Well, we have talked about the boy's law, the child's law, and gay loser's law. We've talked about the boy's law, the child's law, and the gay loser's law in relation to the molecular theory. All right. In this topic, we talked about gas laws, and we looked at the measurement of gas pressure using the manometer. We also considered boy's law, child's law, and gay loser's law. Boy's law, which states that the Boy's law, which states what we just put on the board, that when the, when the temperature and the mass of a, of a gas is constant, the, P, um, the pressure is indirect, indirectly proportional to the volume of the gas. While Charles' law stated that the volume of a gas, of a given mass of gas, is directly proportional to the temperature of the gas if the pressure remains constant, and Gay-Lussac's law states that the pressure of a given mass of gas would is directly proportional to the temperature of the gas if the volume is to be kept constant. We looked at the general gas equation which comprised all of the three of them claiming that P to show us that P1 V1 divided by T1 equals to P2 V2 divided by T2. We also talked about the Van der Waals and Van der Waals equation for real gases explaining that energy being lost to friction and rubbing off rubbing of molecular molecules against themselves and against the walls of the container causes, causes some energy to be lost. Therefore, it does not apply completely that all of this energy would be transmitted. Some energy will be lost in, uh, along the line. So he came up with the equation that says P multiplied by V equals to RT. This is the final equation which actually originated out of P plus a over v squared multiplied by v minus b should equal to rt. We talked also about the kinetic molecular theory in relation to each of these gas laws. Having learned all of these things, some questions displayed on your screen in a few seconds. Please attempt them. And if there is any part of this lesson which you do not understand, you can go back and view that's part all over again, or the entire video. Thank you.